Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another video. Uh, this is gonna be the first edition for 2020 of my weekly watch list. So I do these each and every week where I uh, kind of explain to you guys why I've picked these stocks to watch for the upcoming trading week uh, by going over both the charts and the fundamentals as well. So on the screen right now is my list for this upcoming trading week. We've got um, about 13 stocks that I'm gonna be looking at uh, to enter. And also I have a couple that I'm watching down here as well that I've previously owned. Uh, for instance, AMD just had a green line breakout, which could be another opportunity. Um, and also VCTR um, is one that I currently own and it just had a green dot on this past Friday. So let's go through um, all the new stocks. Um, first, looking at their charts, both on the daily and the weekly, and then we'll go through and look at the earnings per share um, and sales growth. So first, starting with ARVN, um, you can see it's a recent IPO, which um, is what I like to focus on because those are the stocks that really have room for significant growth. Um, and it had a very good 2019, uh, let's see, um, it's up 2.72 since the close 250 days ago. So a very good run recently. Um, and now it has consolidated that move and is just moving sideways. And you had a couple different entry points um, during the past week. And you can also see that even though the general market was down Friday, um, it had a good relative strength day, which is definitely a positive. On the weekly chart, you can see kind of the pattern more clearly. Um, it has... Uh, done really well since um, November um, and is now just setting up a couple weeks tight on this right hand side. Looking at ARWR, this is a stock that um, I've talked about before on this channel, uh, but it's one of the big winners of 2019 um, and it's now consolidating that move um, and kind of forming a downward channel right here. So I would look for it to break through um, this line right here um, and I would look to enter a position it finally breaks through the past um, all-time high that it set um, on uh, early December. So uh, that's when I would look to take a position in ARWR. Because it advanced so much, it's gonna need some time to kind of consolidate that move. Uh, but um, there's definitely something special about it because it advanced 400% last year alone. Uh, so definitely one to keep an eye on um, and to always at, have on your watch list. Next, we've got CDLX, which similarly increased um, looks like 500% since the close 250 days ago. So huge growth here. Uh, you can see this big jump up on a lot of volume here, most likely due to the announcement of a drug of some kind. Um, and since then it's been going sideways um, and I would like to see it get tighter and tighter on this right hand side. Um, and I would look to enter when it breaks through um, this previous resistance here which let's take a look, that's at 65.45. That is the level that it was unable to break through right here. Um, and that's when I look to take a position in this stock. Next, we've got Dexcom, which has very, very good fundamentals. Um, and like CDLX, it jumped up on big volume right here um, and now has been kind of tightening up on this right-hand side. Um, and you can see it set a all-time high right here and then was knocked down a little bit and is since then moving sideways and getting tighter and tighter on this right hand side. Um, and I would look to enter a position and I probably will if it breaks through this 221 level, uh, which it was unable to do on this past Thursday. So um, I like that the volume is decreasing as it's consolidating and tightening up. Um, I take that as a positive sign. On the weekly chart, you can see uh, it's moved more clearly. Uh, it's been on a very good run since 2018 um, and for the majority of 2019, it was actually kind of just going sideways and basing uh, and really only started moving in um, early November of 2019. Next, we've got FISV, which on the weekly chart, you can see kind of this stair step pattern right here. Um, and since then, it's been moving very nicely and then tightening up these past five weeks or so. Um, and on the daily chart, you can see uh, this flat base it's forming and you've got a couple Bollinger Band entries um, to look at as well. Next, we've got FTNT, which um, broke out this past Thursday and showed really good relative strength on Friday. Uh, this is one that's already broken out, but um, it is still within my rules to be able to make a, um, 
take up a position in this stock because the stochastic is still less than 75. Um, and you had a green dot on this past Friday. Um, and what I would like to see is on Monday, on tomorrow, um, I want to see it increasing on volume and keeping up with this move. Next, we've got iFi, which um, is kind of tightening up and coiling tighter and tighter on this right-hand side. Um, and similar to Dexcom, I would want to take up, take up a position when it finally breaks through this 76.81 level. Um, and I would ideally want to see it really break out um, into all-time highs um, past this kind of 77.67 level. So um, I really like the look of this chart. You can see um, it's uh, breaking into new all-time highs and has been basing, breaking out, basing, breaking out over and over again. So um, I really like this tightening that's doing uh, coiling tighter and tighter on decreased volume as well. Um, and looking at the weekly chart, you can kind of see this decreased volume a little bit more clearly. Next, we've got, um, not PFSI yet, we've got Paycom, which um, has been on a very good tear since it IPO'd in um, mid-2014. Um, and in 2019, it kind of formed a deep consolidation, cup and handle. And since then, um, it's been looking to break through the buy points, the pivot point right here, um, so that's what I'm hoping to see from Paycom. Next, we've got PFSI, which um, is forming a flat base right here. Um, it's a little more volatile than I would like. I wanna see kind of these bars tighten up, um, but you can see um, the volume is decreasing as it's consolidating, which is a positive sign. Um, and on the weekly chart, you can clearly see this huge move upwards, and then now it's gotta digest that move, um, and people have to take profits um, so that there'll only be uh, buyers left in the stock. Next, we've got Ping, which is a new IPO. Um, and you can see this wasn't a green line, but um, it was the first IPO base um, that had breakthrough. And since then, it's been doing very well. Um, looking on the daily chart, you can see um, it kind of formed a cup and handle pattern and then broke through that. And now it's consolidating once again. So um, I'd want to see this kind of form a green dot or Bollinger Band bounce. Um, and maybe meet up with its 30-day moving average um, or even consolidate until it meets its 50-day moving average before moving up. Next, we've got Ring, um, Ring Central RNG, which moved up on really big volume um, for two straight days, which shows significant buying interest. And since then, um, has been coiling tighter and tighter on this right-hand side. Um, and you can see the up days have big volume and then the down days have a lot less volume, which is definitely a positive sign. Um, and what I want to see is um, a breakthrough, kind of this trend line here. Um, you can see on Thursday, it advanced on above average volume, but on this past Friday, it got knocked right back down. So I want to see early into next week, it continue that move upwards through that trend line. And now getting down to it, we've got SPAR for Spartan Motors. Uh, and on the weekly chart, you can see it's been forming a nice flat base for about eight weeks. Uh, and on the daily chart, you can see uh, that I wanna see it move through this 19.31 level uh, on above average volume. Um, and however, you do have a couple entry points um, with the Bollinger Bands and green dots. So if that is within your rules, go ahead and take a position in this stock. And finally, we've got Shop, which is forming a clear double bottom pattern right here and is now forming the handle. And what I would like to see is it move through um, this 416 level on above average volume and really break out. Um, it's a positive sign that um, it actually digested this big move because this could mean that in 2020, it's getting ready to really move upwards. Um, and I'll definitely be watching this stock pretty closely. Um, so now that we've kind of talked about the technicals, uh, I want to give a brief demo of the red, white, blue uh, backtest um, program that I've created and that I'll explain in my next video to you guys. And then we'll go ahead and look at all the fundamentals for all these stocks. Um, so first, let's look at a couple of these stocks um, and kind of explain how this works. Um, so all you have to do is enter the ticker symbol um, and then um, it will backtest going back to 2010. So looking at ARVN, first stock on our list, you can see that it provides all the details from all those different trades. Um, so it's got a about 42% batting average, um, but what stands out really with these red, white, blue 
um, entries is that the average gain is usually a lot more than the average loss. And that's key for a profitable trading system. You want at least a two uh, to one gain to loss ratio. And you can see here we've got four. Um, and you can see that it's calculated the total return if you had followed the strategy. Um, and that is 46% over seven trades, which is pretty darn good. Um, and you can see ARWR um, has fared even better. You can see over 35 trades, um, a 1600% move. So very, very good results from ARWR. Um, obviously that was helped by this year alone where it increased 400%. Uh, but this red, white, blue pattern helps you catch those big moves while also protecting you from the downtrends, which is why I really like it. Um, and you can see the average gain was 100%, which is pretty amazing, honestly. Um, and just to round it out, we're gonna look at the TQQQ, which is how I use this strategy. Um, and you can see that over 47 trades since going back to 2010, um, it increased about 450%, which is very, very good returns. So I hope you guys are looking for that. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button um, so you don't miss that. And also while you're down there, make sure to leave a like on the video. Uh, I would really appreciate it. So going down the list, and I'll absolutely make this available down in the description below. So feel free to check out this list for yourself. Um, I hope it helps you. First, looking at VCTR, you can see its IBD ratings are very high. It had very good EPS percent change last quarter, and it's predicted to be even better and accelerating this current quarter. Um, and you can see that this move is actually supported by the sales. You can see sales up 99% last quarter and up 43.2% over the past two quarters. Um, its return equity is very good at 33.7% and its after-tax margins are very good as well. Now taking a look at SPAR, you can see good IBD ratings, um, excellent EPS growth last quarter, and the estimates are up 260% for the next quarter. So that's very, very good. Um, the sales are up, which is a good thing to see. However, its return equity is kind of lower than that 17% mark that I would like to um, that I would like it to be. And its after-tax margins aren't quite as good as VCTRs. Um, now looking at Dexcom, uh, you can see that the EPS last quarter is amazing. Uh, the estimates are up for this quarter, but not accelerating. And um, the estimates for the current year are very, very good at 283%. Um, looking at the sales, you can see they're up 49% last quarter, which is very good. Um, and the return equity, um, however, isn't that good at 5.9%, but the after-tax mar margins are pretty decent. Now looking at Paycom, you can see decent EPS growth, nothing that explosive, um, but very, very steady the past few quarters. Um, the sales are increasing, which is a good thing to see. And its return equity is fantastic at 50.9%. Um, and you can see the after-tax margins are also very, very good. For PFSI, you can see good IBD ratings, um, really good EPS growth the last quarter. And the estimates for this quarter are also very, very good. And the estimates for the year are up 71%. The sales last quarter was up 74%, which is very good. And the return equity, however, isn't that great at 8.3%. Um, the after-tax margins, though, are very, very good. Now at FISV, you can see that the EPS isn't really there. However, the sales last quarter were up 122%. Um, and really what I look for is either really explosive sales or EPS growth. Um, but if a stock has both, like VCTR, that's good to see as well. Um, but just one or the other is plenty good enough. Um, the return equity is very good at 62.7% and the margins are very, very good as well. ARWR, you can see the ratings are pretty good from IBD, especially that relative strength rating of 99. Uh, Market Smith sometimes doesn't provide the EPS numbers um, for especially biotechs, uh, but these are very, very good. Um, you can see the sales are up uh, in a big way, up 284%, and over the past two quarters, up 3,000%, which is very good to see. You can see that the return equity is very good at almost 40% and the after-tax margins are very good as well. For FTNT, you can see very, very good IBD ratings, um, decent and consistent EPS growth um, and decent sales growth as well. Uh, the return equity is very good at 40 
and the after tax margins are very good as well at around 20. For iFi, you can see again, very good IBD ratings um, and very good EPS growth the past two quarters. Ideally, this would be accelerating, meaning this would be up like 160%, uh, but just that it's increasing is a good thing to see. Um, and the estimates for this year are up 85%, which is a positive sign. Um, and the sales are up 21%, which is very good. And the return equity um, is 10, which is less than I would like, but the after-tax margins are also very good. For CDLX, you can see decent IBD numbers, especially that relative strength number. Um, no real earnings because it's a biotech. Um, however, you can see the sales increasing uh, 63% last quarter and averaging 50% over the past two quarters, which is definitely positive. Um, and its return equity um, isn't available and its after-tax margins um, aren't really there uh, as can be expected from a biotech. ARVN, you can see, doesn't have a great composite rating. However, it does have a fantastic relative strength rating and that's kind of what we're looking for. Um, it doesn't really have earnings um, but you can see its sales last quarter were up 789%, which is huge. Um, and you can see its return equity, however, is negative 110, and its margins are pretty, pretty bad. And finally, we've got Shop. You can see it's got a 75 composite rating, a 28 EPS rating, but a relative strength rating of 98. Um, and you can see the EPS last, last quarter was zero. However, it had really good growth the previous two quarters. Um, and the EPS estimates for next year are 384%, which is very good. Um, you can see the sales are increasing 45% last quarter and averaging 46.2% the previous two quarters. Um, and its return equity isn't good at 2.5% and its margins are also not that great. So those are the stocks that I'm gonna be focused on during this upcoming trading week. Um, I hope you guys find this video useful going through both my fundamental and kind of technical process um, and explaining what I look for in each stock. Um, and if you did, please remember to leave a like down below um, and also subscribe if you haven't already. But other than that, good luck next week and I'll see you guys in future videos.